For this demo, I had the honor of drawing Frida Kahlo, an iconic Mexican painter best known for her uncompromising and brilliantly colored self-portraits that deal with themes of identity, death, and the body. Before I begin the charcoal drawing, I would like to show you the basic measurements of the human face. Each of our faces are unique. However, there are commonalities in the general proportions of the face. In this diagram, I'm labeling A as the crown of the head, the very top, B is the eyes, C is the base of the nose, D is the mouth, and E is the bottom of the chin. I'm using the ruler to locate the center of her face as well. This will show me the alignment of her features and the angles of her face. For example, her head is slightly tilted, making that center line angled. Now I'm drawing cross contour lines on Frida's face. These lines follow planes of form moving around and across objects as well as through them. They show us how Frida's face is curved and helps us to see where features fall along those lines. Take a look at how the lines move through her eyes and reach the edges of the mouth. Also notice how the eyes follow one curved line across the face and the nose, mouth, and chin angles are all parallel. Taking a closer look at the letters, the eyes are halfway between the crown of the head and the base of the chin. The base of the nose is halfway between the eyes and the base of the chin. The mouth is a third of the distance between the base of the nose and the base of the chin. And the ear measures from the eye to the base of the nose. Begin by using line to create the shape of the face. Then draw your basic shapes starting from large general shapes and then moving on to smaller more detailed shapes. As you are drawing the features allow your pencil line to get darker in areas of shadow and lighter in areas of highlight. I use a mechanical pencil when I start mapping out my subjects so that I don't have to sharpen the pencil. I use a kneaded eraser because I like how it's more gentle on the paper and I enjoy sculpting the eraser into small or larger shapes depending on what I need to erase. As I map out the features on Frida's face, I see how each line and shape lead to the next part of the face. All of these shapes and lines are interconnected. As I'm becoming more confident in my line drawing, I'll start to further define and darken the line. I'm periodically using the technique called sighting to double check my measurements. I use my pencil or ruler to measure the space between her eyes in the original photograph. The space between her eyes is equal to one eye width. This is often the case with the human face. I can check the measurement on my drawing. I re-measure the drawn eye and see that the space between the eyes is also equal to one eye width. If it wasn't, then I would shift the drawn eye so I can better capture Frida's face. I can check measurements all over the face in this way. I can also use my ruler or pencil to draw imaginary vertical or horizontal lines across the face to see if, for example, the edge of the right nostril aligns with the left edge of the eye. Sometimes I'm able to visualize a proportion between features by viewing imaginary abstract shapes or faces within the subject. This helps me to check the accuracy of the distances between the shapes. Keep in mind that this is one way out of many ways of creating a drawing of a face. Your face can be simplified, abstract, distorted. It can be however you prefer it to be. I'm demonstrating a method that involves observational realism. It's important to experiment, take risks, and also be authentic to the way you love to create. Once your line drawing is done, you are ready for charcoal. 
I'm beginning in areas of darker shadow. I continue double checking distances and shapes as I start to further develop the drawing. I'm using a general 6B pencil to give the drawing a light shading. I'm not going to create dark, dark shapes just yet. To sharpen my pencil, I often use an X-Acto knife. I find that when I use my handheld sharpeners, that sometimes the charcoal fragments or breaks, and the X-Acto knife is a more delicate way of sharpening the pencil as long as you are scraping the pencil tip away from your hand. In addition to my charcoal pencil and kneaded eraser, I'm using a blending stump, which is a stick of tightly rolled soft paper with one or two points. I use the stump to blend and move the charcoal around the face. The stump allows me to blend with subtle gradations of value and to achieve a smooth texture. I'm establishing a darker value structure around each of my focal points. Focal points are where the eye is naturally drawn to. In this composition, they are the eyes, nose, and mouth. Once I establish the values around these features, then I'm ready to render them. At this point, I'm starting to darken the drawing in further, mostly with my 6B pencil, but also with my Krita Color charcoal stick. I'm making sure that my pencil stays nice and sharp. The more you look at your resource image or subject matter, the more you'll be able to capture it. Every little change in value and detail creates the entire whole person. So it's important to just look at that image as much as possible so you can capture the, the subject that you're drawing. If there are too many dark spots in one spot of the face, it won't achieve its illusion. So I need to make sure that the darks are included all around the face as well as all the grays and highlights that make the portrait. I'd like to share a few quotes from Frida Kahlo. She states, I am my own muse. I am the subject I know best, the subject I want to better. Here's another quote. I paint self-portraits because I am so often alone, because I am the person I know best. I am not sick, I am broken, but I am happy to be alive as long as I can paint. Frida experienced the healing power of art. Drawing faces can be really challenging since in our lifetime we see thousands of faces, so we instinctively know when something is off. Also, human faces are each so unique, so if the lips are slightly off, it can look like a new person. And sometimes the face will distort and look a little bit like our own image. These are the fascinating aspects that will come into play when you are drawing the human form. Eyes are one of my favorite parts of the human face. They come in so many different shapes from round to monolid, hooded, downturned, upturned, almond, and more. We know that eyes are rounded. They've got an iris and a pupil, but there are so many additional shapes to discover from the upper eyelid to the lacrimal caruncle, which is a small pink globular spot at the inner corner of the eye. 
It contains both oil and sweat glands. The whites of the eyes are not always so white to communicate their curve in space. Pay close attention to how the value changes on them from a darker gray to lighter gray. The glossy texture of the eye then will invite you to create a bright white highlight and pay close attention to the shape of that highlight. Eyes are like glass. They reflect the space around you and the space around you is also unique. So paying close attention to those shapes and values will help you capture that beautiful eye. Frida and her husband, Diego Rivera, moved to San Francisco in November 1930, where Rivera was working on two separate mural commissions. Shortly after, Kahlo met Imogen and sat for Imogen in 1931. The session produced a handful of beautiful, striking portraits. In this particular image, Cunningham depicts Kahlo in a simple yet powerful close-up. Kahlo, known for her self-portraiture, was aware of how she wanted to be portrayed. She once said, I knew a battlefield of suffering was in my eyes. From then on, I started looking directly at the lens, unflinching, unsmiling, determined to show I was a good fighter to the end. In addition, she effectively manipulated her self-image before the lens through her gaze, pose, and the carefully constructed symbolism of her clothing, jewelry, and hairstyle. Often, when we draw noses, we make the nostrils too big because we know they are pretty wide. However, when we are viewing a face, we are generally not looking up at the nostrils, but rather down at them. So the holes or nasal vestibules become small oval-shaped slits. The mouth is shaped also by the features around it, like the philtrum, which is the vertical groove between the base of the nose and the border of the upper lip. Notice how the corner of the lips compress into a thin line and the groove below the bottom lip recedes back into the face creating a shadow between the mouth and the chin. To be drawing Frida is a magical experience. She was prolific and exceptional in her ability to paint herself with so much skill and depth of emotion. She defined her unique voice with no apologies. She transcended her pain with incredible beauty. She was proud of her ancestry and who she was. <laughs> 